Open your Bibles, please, to Romans 13. This is a very important message. Um, we need to get this one out. I believe I've not preached on this before, but I believe we're coming into the day that we need to know discernment on what to do and what not to do. And this whole Romans 13 has been used and will be used in the future to manipulate and control Christians. And we need to rightly discern what this really means. Amen. Because a lot of people take this scripture, and I know I've studied in the past of things coming that this is the scripture that the powers that shouldn't be are going to use. So we need to know what this scripture means in, in balance to the other scriptures. So while you're turning there, Romans uh, 13, I want to just share a couple of things. Uh, so we rightly devour, divide the word because sometimes it says something here, but it, you got to take what, what's the context of it, the whole context of it. And a lot of people lift this verse or a couple of verses out of context and they don't read the whole chapter. There's a whole lot to this whole chapter. So political powers over man was set up to hold back evil and punish evildoers that oppose God's law. And concerning a wicked ruler, Psalms 109 verse eight says, let his days be few and let another take his office. That's a good scripture, let me say that again. Concerning a wicked ruler, let his days be few and let another take his office. We've always had tyrants, we've always had dictators in history, and we know what the end of the Bible says of what's coming and the mark and the dictatorship and all the different things that we've talked about before. But we need to understand this uh, scripture for our conscience sake and for what's coming you know, in, in the next few months as we know things are uh, gathering steam again, you could say. But tyrants who hold positions of power in Isaiah 45, 9 says, they striveth with his maker. Woe to them that strive against their maker. Because God is a God of love and mercy and justice and honor, and the wicked is opposite. And when they do evil, they're striving against God. They're coming against God and his ways, and they're trying to implement their rules and through their s wicked servants, right? And we know that the battle is between good and evil. So we are to render Caesar's the things that are Caesar's, not any and even powers he claims to be his. Does that make sense? Because Caesar, the, the powers that shouldn't be, uh, claim everything to be theirs, and their control, and uh, as we see the agendas moving forward, as I've shared a lot of these, they want to take things that don't belong to them and charge us for things, and you know, we know the taxation, but not laws that are made for nefarious reasons and taking possessions and freedoms or stealing and making people become slaves under executive orders that are secretly passed. I was talking to an ex-military person, and I said, how did we get here? And he said, because of the secret things they were doing behind all of our backs. Exactly. Things that no one knew, laws that were being passed, events that would happen, all of a sudden, now we have this act. Now, Romans 13, let's look there. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. Now remember, we're talking about God. We're not talking about the devil. We're not talking about the Luciferians. We're talking about the powers that God set up. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. We're talking here about the ministers of God. When God puts people 
in power to do the right thing. Okay, so they're ministers of God. Well, we also know that there's ministers of Satan. We're talking here about the ministers of God. So we need to discern, is this a good leader Amen. or a bad leader? Are we being told things that are right or things that are wicked? And we're going to use some Bible ex uh, examples here. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Now you have to remember, if someone's telling you to do something, and we're going to see the midwives in the Bible here, they had a conscience, and they were told to do one thing, but their conscience wouldn't allow them to do that. Well, God's given us a conscience. And so when the evil, wicked minister is trying to tell us to do something evil, we're not to obey that. Uh, for this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers. Here we go again. We're talking about God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Now, verse 9, for this thou shalt not commit adultery. He's going into the things that God's law says. People cut this off, and they don't read the whole thing. We're still talking about ministers of God. For this cause thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is um, briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So he talks about casting off the works of darkness, not doing darkness, casting off darkness. Read the whole thing. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So you read that in context and you see we're talking about the powers of the Lord that he's put in place and that we should honor them and do good and not do evil, okay? Uh, because many people take that scripture and they use it to manipulate. You have to obey me because I'm over you. A dictatorship is where a political party or one person uses power and force to suppress the people's voice and control their lives. We're coming into a new season of, unless it's going along with what is, we're supposed to say, people are vanishing off of the internet, and we know that. But new laws, I just heard of a new one today. An explanation of current day talks today, if you could say, okay, what's happening today from politicians are, and this is a quote, it's not mine, but I thought I'll quote it. If you wish to be a success in the world, promise everything and deliver nothing. Yeah. So this is a current day talks here from the governing powers. They promise everything and deliver nothing. And I call that Hoya, Hoya, Hoya. They have Hoya speeches. Boy, boy, you just have to vote for me because I'm going to promise you this and this. And then you wait four years and you go, wow, I thought you didn't believe in that, but you passed this. You said you didn't believe in that, and now we have this at warp speed. <clears throat> Dictators don't believe in God and make themselves as God. Now remember, the enemy wants to be worshipped. He wants to be like the Most High God. He wants to do everything God can do. And the Bible says that he's going to, you know, rise up an antichrist system and the beast system and the mark and all these things. We see steps that are being made. You can't deny them unless you're blind. And so many people are blinded because they don't want to face reality. Amen. And coming to reality is, I don't know how to say it, but yeah, it's not fun, but it's better to know the truth. Sometimes the truth is hard, it hurts, but it sets you free because you can see through the lies. They have no fear of God. If they feared God, they would obey what he said to do in the Romans 13. They would, we would, won't kill, we wouldn't do all these different things, we wouldn't steal from people. 
Uh, they have no fear of God, but they want you to fear them. They use fear. And we'll see that in the book of Acts and how they used fear. They love to use fear to threaten. Dictators are like the prophesied counterfeit, the Antichrist, that will eventually rule over the whole world. They've always wanted to rule the world, and they've always wanted to live forever. Their own way. Their own way. History repeats itself. The leaders always do this. They use double speak, manipulation. They promise, especially now, peace and safety. This is for grandma's safety. The book of Revelation details this as the mystery Babylon. United false religions and political world at the end times are merging. There will be no more church and state. It's all state. Just like some of the other countries that we've read about in the past, when I started seeing these two worlds unite, it was like, wow, we're really moving towards the end times now. Now, our hope and our promise, Romans 8.35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, none of these things can separate us. No matter what we go through, and this has been a week for me. had a miscarriage in the family, just heard of someone very close to me died right before a couple hours ago. It just seems like it's nonstop. One thing after another, doesn't it? It seems like everything is sped up, but it still doesn't separate us from the love of God. God loves us. We've got to keep our eyes focused on him. The distractions are over here, over here, and we have to take time for ourselves to make sure we're rooted and grounded in him. Now, there's different words that I could use, but I'm going to just call it passive resistance. Okay, uh, Refusing because of challenges of certain mandates, demands, decrees, commands, uh, instructions that are coming down, do you have to follow because Romans 13 is being used by a certain pastor leader yeah. that you have to obey that leader because he's quoting that verse. Now remember, you have to rightly divide that yeah. and you have to see the situation that's going on and we're going to look at a few biblical examples. Pharaoh ordered to kill the male children when they were born. Remember that? The midwives did not they did not do it because God had a plan for Moses, didn't he? If they would have obeyed the, the leader, the ruler, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, Moses would have died. But they feared the Lord, and they didn't obey Pharaoh. In Exodus 1.16, this is uh, what Pharaoh said, when you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women and see them on their birth stools, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. Now, is that a godly leader? Didn't we just read in Romans 13, thou shalt not kill? But if it's a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male children alive. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing and saved the male children alive? And it was so because the midwives feared the Lord. And so Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Well, in verse 19, the midwives said, you know, the Hebrew women are lively and they deliver before the midwife can even get there. So, uh, yeah. God bless the midwives. He blessed them for disobeying that authority because it had to do with life and death and their conscience. Romans 13, we have to do things that are according to our conscience and according to God's laws what God has set up, what God wants his ministers of God to be. 
not people that are stepping in the place of God uh, and trying to be feared and trembled and like Pharaoh here. And later, Moses challenged Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 4. He was obeying God's instructions and guidance to release the Israelites, wasn't he? So he refused evil. They refused evil. We have to refuse evil. Amen. Then Rahab in Joshua 2. I can't read my own writing here. Uh, 1 through 4, I think I said. Uh, saved the lives of two Hebrew spies by hiding them from the soldiers who were searching for them. Now remember, she wasn't even a believer, but she picked a side. She picked a side. She lied to save their lives. She feared God and refused evil. Amen. She was a harlot, but she feared God. There's hope for all of us. <laughs> There's hope for us all. And then I've been talking about the leaven of Herod. Beware of the leaven of Herod. In Matthew 2, 7 through 8, Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. They were looking for the Savior. They are looking for Jesus. And he sent them to Bethlehem, and he said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. He was lying. He didn't want to worship him. He wanted to kill him. And that's why he was trying to kill all the male births. He was threatened by Christ coming in as the Savior and the whole lineage and all that. They didn't return to Herod to tell him where he was. They disobeyed the leader. Herod lied. He wanted to get rid of anyone who would be a candidate for the Savior. Mary and Joseph then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. Remember the leaven of Herod. They departed for their own country another way, Matthew 2, 12, because they were evil leaders, and they were wanting to do destruction. They were wanting to kill, steal, and to destroy. John the Baptist spoke out against Herod, even in jail, calling him, calling him out. In Luke 3.19, but Herod, being rebuked by John, rebuked by him, concerning Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, he was not a minister of God. He was a minister of evil. Mm -hmm. So you have to discern, are you under a minister of God or a minister of evil? Hosea 8.4, speaking to Israel, they set up kings but not by me. Mm -hmm. These are not God's kings. Amen. They made princes, but I did, not I did not acknowledge them. So Psalms 2 says the kings of the earth, they gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Yeah. So there's a spiritual battle going on, and we're not supposed to just blindly follow and be deceived and, and get wrapped up in doing things that are against our conscience and against our, our fellow brother. We're supposed to walk in love towards our fellow brethren, right? So today, this is God does not appoint leaders to destroy his people, but the enemy will. You hear of dictators that got rid of all their people. Well, these were not mes messengers of God. And corruption of the kings and rulers of the earth who come against the Lord and his anointed. So we see there's good and there's evil. And lastly, let's turn to Acts chapter 4. Now this whole thing here is about um, Peter and John. and This is important. Let's look at verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. But look at who we're dealing with here. We're dealing with rulers, leaders, head of the synagogue, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin. And they weren't good. They were not ministers for good. And they were 
trying to stop Peter. Th there was a miracle and they wanted to stop it, okay? And then verse 5, it talks again that there are rulers and elders and scribes and the high priest and the kindreds of the high priest. They were all gathered together and they'd set them in the midst. By what power, by what name have you done this? Healed this person in this miracle. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel. And he talks, he says, verse 10, All the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, when God raised him from the dead, even by death, this man stand here before you whole. It was a miracle. And they didn't like that. They couldn't deny it, but they didn't want it to spread. Neither is, verse 12, is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He's preaching here. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and that perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Again, here verse 15, you see the council. Uh, verse 16, they say, all these guys are getting together. What are I going to do with these guys? For they indeed did a notable miracle. We can't deny it. Verse 17, but that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly, straightly threaten them. And this is what's happening today with that it doesn't spread amongst the people. We got to stop it. We got to threaten them. We gotta, we've got to put a hold and, and get rid of people's YouTubes and get rid of whistleblowers and anyone that's going to tell you something that's opposite of what the narrative is. Do you see the seriousness that we're in right now, the times? Because people that didn't do their research, are not. some of them are not going to be able to find truth because things are going to get scrubbed. Yeah. Books are going to be gone. We've been warning this since 2016 mm -hmm. that these things were coming into these times because it's, it's an old script that they keep following with other countries. They just keep doing the same things and it seems to work so they do it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them. They love to use fear. Yeah. That they speak henceforth to no man in his name. Don't get the truth out. Don't tell people what's really going on. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. I like this but. This is a big but right here. <laughs> but Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God, to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they had threatened them again, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. They were afraid of the people because so many people saw this miracle and they couldn't deny it and they didn't know what to do. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old and on whom this miracle of healing was showed. And being let go, they went to their own company. Do you know we have to have our own company? We have to have our own people in this day. It might not be a lot <laughs> because there's a few narrow walkers it's 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 now everybody's walking the wide road but god has his people that are narrow walkers right narrow path walkers and you got to go to your own company because then you'll you'll realize you're not alone you need to be built up yeah. peter had john they had each other god will give us someone and they reported all that the chief priests and elders has said unto them and when they heard this they lifted up their voice to god with one accord and said lord Thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Now verse 26 is the same as Psalms 2. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, 
Now here's all the people coming against him. These are all the rulers that are evil. Herod, Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever their hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. So he's laying it out. He's being real. He's not being a faith, so-called can't deny it. Oh, I have to confess this and this. All this foolishness going around about the power of your words. It's nothing more than mysticism, new age. But they told the truth. Amen. And now, Lord, he told them everything that was going on. Now behold their threatenings. This is a real thing. They're really threatening us. And grant unto thy servants to hide, to go get a bunker. Let's just hide out and be afraid. He said, grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Those threats were real, but the boldness of God came upon them. And by stretching forth thine hand to heal, that signs and wonders might be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. It goes on and on how they became more united, that they didn't allow these threatenings and these evil uh, rulers, and there were many, there were many. They were in power. They were in charge of the synagogues. But they obeyed God rather than man. Do we obey God or do we obey man? Sometimes it comes to this point in our lives. Mm -hmm. Do we obey God, Amen. what he's telling us to do Amen. with the ministers of God? Or do we submit and do we succumb to these evil rulers Amen. that are out to what? Steal, yeah. kill, and destroy, depopulate, we know a lot of things that are going on. It's like we're living in the Hunger Games right now. We have to ask God to give us strength, boldness, that we still could preach his word. So now you have to discern what side the leaders are on. Are they liars? Are they truth tellers? Do they love the Lord? Or do they just use the Christian card? So many deceptive leaders say they're Christians. But how do you know? You know by the fruit. Mm -hmm. So we have to discern what side the leaders are on, good or bad, godly or antichrist. We are facing and going to face godless leaders that want to control us, stop us from worshiping God. And if you don't notice that they're replacing everything with paganism right now, just turn on a game or a halftime show and yeah. you see more demonic things and symbolism. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by now you know your symbols. So when you see symbols, and even Christians that say they're Christians, look at their symbols. Yeah. That's how I got rid of a lot of my books because it had the emblem of the sun god on it. And though, I thought, wow, that was... You can't hold on to any leader right now. If they're turning against God or if they're using deception, you got to make sure that you're not following a false prophet or false teacher even though they're popular because you're you you have to because someone i met this week and they were just so frustrated they didn't know what to do i said you got to be in your bible you can't just trust leaders anymore you've got to have that your own personal relationship with the lord so you know what the bible says because if they start saying stuff and then back in the day we followed this guy that had seven revelations seven visitations from jesus and now I'm like, he was a liar. He didn't have seven visitations from Jesus. Every visitation he had took away some of the Bible. Yeah. And these extra biblical revelations and visitations are so happy. God doesn't do that. God doesn't take away from what he already said. He's not the author of confusion. Now we know they're replacing it with paganism. All the things, the Babylon, the Babylonian gods, and you look at some of these uh, three-letter associations and companies, whatever you want to call them, merchants of the earth, they have the Egyptian eye right on it, and they want to go right under your skin. That's all I can say. Censorship is upon us. And what do we do like Peter and John? Lord, behold their threatenings. Grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we shall speak thy word. Right? Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you that we'll share this. We're being suppressed. They don't want us to get the truth out, but I pray that each and every one of us would do our part to share things so that people have clarity of what's going on, that this scripture will not be twisted. 
It will not be manipulated to cause uh, good Christians to be deceived in this hour. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for guidance. We thank you, Father, for the joy of the Lord in times that do not seem joyful, that your presence is with us, your Holy Spirit's with us. We thank you for godly friends, godly connections. Uh, we, we thank you, Lord, for keeping us strong and safe in this, this hour as we walk through the valley of shadow of death, as you said, in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. And remember, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And I want to... Uh, just ask people from other countries to send us. Some people say, don't read my email. I won't. If you don't want me to read, <laughs> read your email, I won't. Uh, but I do like to know what's going on in your countries. I've heard some things about Australia right now, and I want to make sure that our YouTubes are still getting around, that you can still uh, find us. You might want to uh, go to Roberta Morrison 2 and subscribe to our backup channel in case something does happen to this. I've never pushed that very much, but this is a day that we need to have alternatives. So we do have that Roberta Morrison 2 uh, YouTube. We'll have the link below here. So that you, just in case something happens to this main one, I'm really thankful the Lord's let us get out as much as we've been able to get out. Every week I'm like, oh Lord, let this one go through, let this one go through. Because God wants his people to know what's going on. Even though it's not pleasant to know, it's important to know, and it's important that leaders that shouldn't be uh, in the days coming, we don't know, but we know that more decrees and mandates are coming, and we have to walk in the fear of the Lord and yeah. in our own conscience. We have to do what God's telling us to do. We can't tell other people what to do. We've tried. Some people are no longer with us today. Some people that I've tried to tell them, and it's like they know that I can't go into that right now, but we just want to walk in the fear of the Lord and do what God tells us to do. And we're no good if we run in front of a car and die, right? We want to be here. Our days are numbered, but we want to do what God's asked us to do in these end times. And the window is open. We know it's closing, but as long as it's still open, we've got to preach the truth. Amen? Amen. If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison, her backup channel, Roberta Morrison 2, and on the Living in His Presence Church website, where you can access the messages on the top center of the main webpage. There are free audio downloads of the messages. We are viewer supported. On the main webpage at the top right is a Give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.